Consider this problem. We have a long circular cylindrical rod made of copper and it's placed between two other metals, a hot metal and a cold metal. Now the hot metal is at 200 degrees Celsius and the cold metal is 100 degrees Celsius in temperature. Now the length of the copper rod, it's five meters long. How can we calculate the heat current in this material? The heat current represented by the symbol H is the rate at which heat energy is transferred. So it's the change in Q, which is the amount of heat energy transferred divided by the change in time. So it represents how fast thermal energy is being transferred. And it's equal to the thermal conductivity constant times the area of the circular rod multiplied by the difference in temperature. So that is the hot temperature minus the cold temperature. And the difference could be in Celsius or Kelvin. The difference in Celsius temperature is the same as the difference in the Kelvin temperature. And then we need to divide it by the length of the rod. So we have everything that we need. The thermal conductivity of copper is given to us. It's 385 watts per meter per Celsius. To calculate the area, we have the radius. So it's going to be pi r squared. The radius, which is 15 centimeters, is 0.15 meters. And we need to square that number. And then the difference in temperature, that's going to be 200 Celsius minus 100 degrees Celsius. And then the length of the rod is 5 meters. So let's go ahead and type this in. So the heat current is 544.3 watts or joules per second. And so this is the answer for part A. Now let's move on to part B. How much thermal energy will be transferred in five minutes? So we need to calculate Q. Q is going to be the heat current multiplied by the time. So we have the time in five minutes. We need to convert that to seconds. So there's 60 seconds in a single minute. And we have the heat current in watts or joules per second. So 544.3 joules of thermal energy will be transferred every second. And so that's what the heat current tells us, how much heat energy is being transferred every second. And so 5 times 60 is 300 seconds. So 300 seconds times 544.3 will give us 163,290 joules. So that's how much thermal energy will be transferred in 5 minutes. So that is the answer to part B. Now let's move on to part C. Calculate the temperature gradient. So what is that? The temperature gradient is the change in temperature divided by the length. And in this example, we have a difference of 100 degrees Celsius over a length of 5 meters. So the temperature gradient is 20 Celsius per meter. So that's the answer for part C. Now, part D. What will be the steady state temperature in the copper rod 2 meters from the hot metal? So I'm going to draw a bigger picture. So let's say this is 5 meters long. And this is 200 and this is 100. Now let's call this position zero. So every meter, the temperature is going to change by 20 degrees Celsius. 
So let's say this is one meter from the left, two meters, three, four, and five. So one meter from the hot metal, it's going to be 20 degrees less. So it's going to be 180 degrees Celsius. And then another meter from that, it's going to be 160, and then 140, and then 120. So after some time has passed, if these temperatures are constant, if they remain at the values that they are, you're going to get a temperature gradient. Every meter, the temperature is going to drop by 20 degrees Celsius. So the answer to part D, the final steady state temperature, 2 meters from the hot metal, is going to be 160 degrees Celsius. So that's the answer. Number two, a 4 meter long aluminum rod with a cross-sectional area of 0 0.05 square meters is attached to a hot metal at 300 Celsius and a cold metal at 50. Calculate the amount of thermal energy that will be transferred in 15 seconds. So in this problem, we need to calculate Q. So Q is going to be the thermal conductivity times the area multiplied by the time in seconds times the difference in the two temperatures divided by the length. We're not looking for the heat current, which is the change in Q divided by the change of time. We simply need to calculate the total thermal energy that will be transferred. Now the thermal conductivity of aluminum, which I'm going to give it to you now, is 205 and the units are watts per meter per Celsius. So feel free to try this problem if you want to. The thermal conductivity, K, as you mentioned before, is 205. The cross-sectional area is 0 0.05. And the time is 15 seconds. And the difference in temperature, 300 minus 50, is 250 Celsius. And the length of the rod is 4 meters. So 205 times 0 0.05 times 15 times 250 divided by 4 is 9,609 joules. So that's the amount of thermal energy that's transferred in 15 seconds. Now, if you wish to calculate the heat current, it's simply delta Q over delta T. So it's the amount of energy transferred divided by the time, which is 15 seconds. So you should get about 641 watts. So basically, the heat current is basically the power, the thermal power, which is work over time or energy over time. It has the same unit as power, which is watts or joules per second. Now, let's calculate the thermal resistance of the aluminum rod. The thermal resistance is represented by the letter R. And it's the length of the rod divided by the thermal conductivity. So we have a 4 meter long rod, and the thermal conductivity is 205. So the thermal resistance for this particular aluminum bar is going to be 0 0.0195. And the units are square meters times Celsius per watt. Notice that the R value for aluminum is very low. And it makes sense because aluminum is a conductor. Metals, which conduct electricity very well, have a very high K value, but a low R value. So good conductors of heat, like metals and even diamond, they're going to have a high thermal conductivity value, but a low thermal resistance. Now insulators, like wood, fiberglass, air, if it's not moving, these will have a low thermal conductivity value because they don't conduct elect I mean heat very well. I was going to say electricity, but heat. But they will have a high R value. So make sure you understand that insulators have a high thermal resistance and 
heat conductors have a high thermal conductivity. In this problem, we have a 4 meter aluminum bar and it's attached to a hot reservoir at 400 degrees Celsius and the aluminum bar is attached to a 6 meter copper bar which is attached to a cold reservoir at 100. Now the two metal bars have the same cross-sectional area and we have the thermal conductivities of each metal. What is the steady state temperature at the aluminum copper junction shown below? So we want to find the temperature at that point. So how can we do this? What we need to realize is that the heat current that flows in the aluminum bar is equal to the heat current that flows in the copper metal bar. And we know that the heat current is equal to the thermal conductivity times the area times the temperature difference divided by the length. So what we're going to do is set the heat current in the aluminum bar equal to the heat current in the copper bar. So this is going to be K for the aluminum bar times the area times the temperature of the aluminum bar at the hot reservoir. Now the cold temperature for aluminum is basically this temperature. So I'm going to call that T. That's the T that we're looking for divided by the length of the aluminum bar. And then for the right side, it's going to be the thermal conductivity of copper times the cross-sectional area. Now, this part is the hot temperature for copper. So I'm going to call that T. And the cold temperature for copper is Tc, or which is 100, divided by the length of the copper bar. So make sure you understand that the left side is for aluminum, the right side is for copper. Now let's go ahead and plug in the values. Now both metal bars have the same cross-sectional area, so we can cancel A. The thermal conductivity for aluminum is 205. And the hot temperature reservoir for the aluminum metal is 400. The length of the aluminum bar is 4 meters, and for the copper bar is 6 meters. The thermal conductivity of copper is 385, and the cold temperature reservoir is 100. So now, we just got to do math and solve for T. Two o five divided by four is fifty one point twenty five, and three eighty five divided by six that's sixty four point one seven. Now, on the left side, let's distribute fifty one point twenty five to four hundred minus T. So 51.25 times 400, that's 20,500, and then minus 51.25t. On the right side, we're going to have 64.17t minus 64.17 times 100 is 64.17. So now let's add 51.25t to both sides. And let's add 6417 to both sides. So 20,500 plus 6417, that's 26,917. And on the right side, we got 64.17 plus 51.25. And so that's 115.42. So 26,917 divided by 115.42, that will give us a temperature of 233 Celsius, which is in between 400 and 100. So that answer makes sense.
So at this point, the temperature is this value. Now let's calculate the temperature gradient in the aluminum bar and the copper metal. So right now for this problem, this is the final answer. But we're just taking this problem another step further. So keep in mind, the temperature gradient is the change in temperature divided by the length. So in any case for the aluminum bar, the temperature difference is 400 minus 233 divided by a length of 4. So it changes 41.75 degrees Celsius per meter. Now the temperature gradient in the copper bar is going to be 233 minus 100. So that's the temperature difference of 133 Celsius divided by 6 meters. So the temperature gradient is 22.167 Celsius per meter. So now we could calculate the temperature along these two rods at every meter. So let's say this is zero. So at one meter, the temperature is going to be 400 minus 41.75. So at this point, it's going to be 358.25. Now let me draw a bigger picture because I'm going to run out of space here. So let's say this is the aluminum bar. And let's say this is the copper bar. So here the temperature is 400 and here it's 100. And let's call this zero. So at one meter, we said the temperature is going to be 358.25. Now, at two meters, it's going to be 358.25 minus 41.75. So the temperature is going to be 316.5 Celsius. And at three meters, it's 316.5 minus 41.75. So it's going to be 274.75. And at 4 meters, if you take 274.75 minus 41.75, you get 233 Celsius. Now at 5 meters, we need to use the temperature gradient for copper now. So it's 233 minus 22.167. And so the temperature is going to be 210.8 degrees Celsius. And then at 6 meters, it's 210.8 minus 21.167. So it's going to be about 189.6. And you can keep doing this until you get to 100. So the temperature gradient tells you the temperature change along the rod every meter. So that's it for this video. Hopefully this gave you a good understanding of heat currents, thermal conductivity, thermal resistance, and uh, temperature gradients along the metal. Thanks for watching.